Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we have a special Patreon guest on. We're going to play some Bad Samaritan, do a little casual comparisons. Like always, answer some listener questions. This is episode 383. I'm your sexy ranch and co host, Calder Ness. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. IOH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. Joining me, like always, in the studio is, and I, I'm sorry I didn't say this last week, uh, Dial H for Hero Clicks champion, Billion Clicks Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? <sighs> Yes, thank you, thank you, Calder. That is your job as as the unvictor. Uh, what do they? What do people call that? Ah, yes, as the loser, your job is to correctly address me. Thank you, thank you. Humble uh, as always, Simeon. I appreciate that. And then, like I said, special listener guest. We got Bill. What's going on, Bill? Uh, it's going good. How are you, Calder? I'm doing, I'm doing fantastic. No, you, don't, you don't have to ask. How I'm not Simeon's doing too bad. Doing. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 you don't care. We don't care, Simeon. No, it's fine. I'm doing. I'm doing all right. Okay. Just want you to know, like you can say that, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, normally, we start off with what made us happy this week. Uh, this week, since we have a guest, we're going to get to know Bill a little bit better uh, before we answer that question. So, Bill, I'm going to do a real easy question here. When did you get started playing Hero Clicks? How did that come about? What's your little Hero Clicks origin story? Sure. Um, Two-part answer. I actually Hmm. first started playing Heroclix around, um, I want to say 2004. My my HD Realms join date is around 2004. At the time, I was playing Magic and just kind of stumbled into Heroclix, where the website I was, like, looking up Magic card previews and stuff on, they added a Heroclix site, and I was like, what the heck is Heroclix? And I clicked on it, and I was like, wow, it's kind of like miniature hero super comic book chess. And I was like, this seems pretty interesting. I happened to walk into a local mire, and they had a brick of, was it Universe? I can't remember what set it was back then. Um, I saw it there, and I said, you know what the hell with it? I'll buy it. Picked it up, cracked it open, tried to learn the rules. They were obviously a lot different back then. Um, Let me tell you. One thing weird, too, the bricks back then were so small. I mean, compared to what they look like now, it was only three, you know, figure brick, like three figures per, like, pack. Way different. Yeah. I tried playing it with my friends. They really weren't that into it. We were young. They were like, oh, this is too complicated. I just put the figures away. They were sitting in a basement. And during the pandemic, in March of, like, 2020, I was cleaning out a closet and I found the old figures, like the old pieces. And I was like, oh, Heroclix. I wonder if it still exists. Like, does this game still exist? Like, are people still playing it? (laughs) Turns out they were. I went online and the next two sets that were coming out were JLU and Fantastic Four. And I liked that cartoon and I liked Fantastic Four. And I said, you know what? I'm stuck inside. Can't do anything. I'm going to get back into Heroclix. And that's pretty much what I decided to do. After I saw them, I was like, I'm going online. I'm going to buy them. Bought a, you know, bought a brick of each of them, of JLU, and bought a brick of Fantastic Four. And started going online, trying to figure out exactly how to play the game, because the rule book can be a little confusing at times. And stumbled upon the uh, Dial H for Heroclix new user uh, episode, listen to that, and you know, the rest is history. And if you want to be like Bill and <laughs> and Dallas <laughs> Hero Clicks new user episode, that's in the link of our podcast description below if you just started playing the game. 
check that out. I forgot to say that at the beginning of the show. Thank you, Bill. Hey, that's awesome. So you like started early on, like, man, this game sucks. Uh, well, not really, but I did. Wasn't... I actually liked it, but my friends yeah. were like, we were young, you know. They were just like, Ugh, you know, and it's too much, too complicated. I too many rules. Whatever. They didn't. They weren't that into it, but I liked it. But yeah, I then abandoned it because I couldn't get anybody to play it with me. So picked it up later on. I had like a 15 year gap in a uh, hero yeah. play. That is cool that you you kept some of the figures that entire amount of time though. Most people would have probably dumped them by then. Um, you, oh, I still have. Surprised? I still have them. I it still was have still them. going on. Were you like, oh wow, it's still going? I on. was like pretty surprised different. because I was pretty surprised. Most games don't go that long; they usually disappear. And I thought I remember hearing the Heroclix went bankrupt like a couple of times, like WizKids or whoever. I could be wrong. I wasn't following the whole lore of, you know, Heroclix at that point. But I thought I remember hearing something about it, like shutting down at multiple different points. Although you guys could correct me if I'm wrong. It did for one year um, before it was bought out by NECA. So Tops, I'm pretty sure Tops discontinued like the WizKids Heroclix or something like that. Uh, That's who originally started making them. And so WizKids was still a company, and NECA acquired it and started producing new ones. Uh, that would have been with Hammer of Thor, uh, I believe was the, the first new set, or something something along those lines, if I remember correctly. Gotcha. Yep. I mean, but when I decided to come back in, still going. And they decided to make sets that were pretty interesting for me, so they got me right there. And like I said, stuck inside. So didn't right. have much better to right do. On. Speaking of those right. older figures and coming back to the game, what are some of your favorite pieces? Uh, favorite pieces overall or just like favorite new pieces or some favorite combos that you like to play? That's a multi-part question right there. Um, so my favorite old, if it's favorite old pieces, not because they're good, but like I bought a brick of fantastic forces just because I wanted the Nimrod. Not, <laughs> I paid 10 bucks on eBay for a brick and I thankfully pulled the Nimrod cause I would have been pretty ticked off if I hadn't pulled it. And it's not great. It, it really illustrates to you how much different the game is now. If you look at those stats where it's like, what is like 265 points or something. And it the back end dial stats are pretty terrible, but it's fun to me. I like to mess around with Golden Age occasionally. And in terms of modern, I'm trying to decide what I'm what I'm trying to do right now. I'm working on a Silver Age team right now, more than a Modern Age team. That I I posted it in the Discord. You know, join the Patreon if you want to access the Discord. Uh, where it's Thanos plus uh, the super rare. Uh, Red Sun Lex Luthor from Wonder Woman 80. And I can use the Thanos to make sure that Lex Luthor can always hit those clicks where he pops out the pogs. Hmm. And I'm working from there. I want that Lex Luthor to see play. I want that Lex Luthor to see play. I like that. He's my guy. My favorite ginger. A lot of respect. A lot of respect. Same here, man. Same (laughs) here. One of the few Lex Luthors with hair in comics. (laughs) Yes. All right, dude. Right on. As a fellow Lex Luthor fan, I agree. So typically, and I've done a ton of in-person play. Uh, would you consider yourself a more like competitive or casual player? Always make um, it, try to make the best teams, or just like yeah, I just want to play. I just want to play. Oh, the I'm, I'm definitely more of a casual player. I'm I'm a what like how can I make this figure work? Like even though it's not that great, like I'm really looking at uh, Reed Richard, Reed Richards' fixture of the universe right now, but I'm using Golden Age figures where I'm using Trevor Fitzroy, where I can auto-teleport him across the map to their starting area. I'm doing goofy stuff. Like, I'm not the super meta, like, look how many Sky Tyrants I have person. Like, that's that's not going to be me. I mean, if I show up to a meta event, I'm going to build a team that's meta. But in terms of just fun with my friends, yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be goofy, weird stuff that probably isn't that good, but it's just fun. On. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, and then I think we've already kind of talked about this uh, prior to recording, but what's your favorite format to play? Do you like th- like 300, 400? 
what kind of like point value are you building to? And then are you just doing like straight and like golden age kind of stuff? It's probably 400 point golden. And we like, when we play, we ban like, like most retaliators, at least on their start on their retaliation click. And then we ban, um, ID cards and we just play it. We play for fun. No one's trying to break the whole golden age meta, you know, trying to find some, combo that's infinite or anything like that we're just playing for fun but i just like when we play we like having a lot of stuff that we can just pick from just for fun because a lot of characters are not in modern right now they haven't been remade so we just pick whatever you like (laughs) nice right on then you want to shout out just some venue around your area (laughs) or like where you buy your clicks from or something just do a quick shout out bro I'm going to shout out the uh, Stadium Hero Clicks in Frankenmuth, which is another. Uh, it's uh, run by another guy who's on the Patreon, Alex. So that's the uh, stadium. I'm gonna. That's the uh, venue. I'm gonna shout out. All right, on. Alex is a great guy. So you know, let's been on the you know. been on the been on the podcast before himself. Yes. So if well, yeah. you, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, if you if the name sounds familiar, he is normally our magic aficionado. Um, when we need references to that other collectible game that is equally good as Hero Clicks, or at uh, least popular, uh, equally popular. Uh, it's popular. See now, equally as good. I'm kind of leaning a different kind of way. Equally as popular is a different kind of way than I was leaning, leaning before. Um, yeah. All right, so I'll we'll just go ahead and uh, get into what made us happy this week. Uh, Simeon, you want to go ahead and start, man? Yeah, uh, so this week, um, man, I hate when what made me happy is food, but sometimes like that's what it's got to be. So uh, this right. week, it was it was all about food. I hit up the Momo station. It was one of my best friend's birthdays, so we went to Momo's. Uh, then we got some coneflower ice cream. And then later on in the week, I hit up this uh, Lucky Dragon place, which I haven't been to before, and I got some gyoza and some ramen and that stuff was really good um i don't know if it was as good as like the price tag but like man if it if it was like something i could easily make i would probably make that like twice a week because that stuff's really good okay Uh, what made me happy this week it was a lot of things i'll try to be semi like fast with it so it's been a while since i've done a movie list um, I've watched I watched three movies uh, this week. wasn't a ton, unlike the five or six movies when I did my past movie lists. Uh, but these are all fairly different. So, just to go ahead and name all the movies, and I'll tell you the order that I rank them. And now this is not overall. This is just out of these three movies, which ones I think were the best. Uh, but I watched La La Land. I watched uh, The Condemned or Condemned. Then I watched uh, The Muppets: A Christmas Carol. Uh, this week to get into the Christmas season, since we all know that is starting right now. It's Christmas. It's Christmas season. Oh. It's Christmas season. Um, so I think it's Halloween. Uh, it's definitely Christmas season. And I think we're just gonna uh, uh, cancel. It's definitely Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> you can't cancel Christmas. Uh, anyways, quite the Jack Skellington, I know. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to go starting from the bottom going up. So uh, coming in at number three is going to be Condemned. Uh, Condemned is, however, starring a figure, a figure, a, a person who is a Heroclix figure. Condemned stars Stone Cold Steve Austin in a Hunger Games uh, type scenario where convicts are put on an island and made to fight to the death um, where it's videotaped and streamed throughout the world to see. So Condemned was a fun little goofy watch that's going to take it... Uh, last place second and now this was this was a close this was kind of close because these are both really good movies in my opinion uh but it's gonna go to la la land second place um it's la la yeah. land getting second place again wow yeah um i'd never seen it before i ryan do remember gosling just you know he tried his yeah. best but i you know i felt for ryan gosling at at the same time was his fault except for the very first thing oh, wow. which was she, she should have she should have moved her car she was holding up traffic so she deserved that definitely but uh and not i'm saying it's ryan gosling's character's fault ryan gosling is an awesome actor um it's not his fault that they get second it's it's it was his character's fault that him and the girl didn't or spoilers for la la land uh, him and the girl don't end up together 
<laughs> yeah, spoiler for La La Land, sad at the end. I mean, yeah, it's sad. Sad, sad ending. Movie. It is a sad ending. You're just kind of like, It wasn't sad until the ending, but it was sad it at wasn't the ending. It? No, but you were like, for a second there, I was like, oh, does this just mean like their dreams just don't line up? Like, that's just sort of life, I guess. Like, that's sad. And then you're always like, ah, I guess they, they might have been able to make it work. But they were both difficult. But if you had to like, if you had to choose fault, like if you had to choose fault, it would be Ryan Gosling because he was a jerk. Um, well, plus, I mean, it, it won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Oh, see? So, it? Oh, wait, it, oh, wait it didn't. Oh, wait, it didn't. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. I thought it got beat out. <laughs> anyway. You don't remember that? You don't remember that actual scenario? Yeah. Where they, they got, like, walked up there and they, yeah, they said La La Land won. And then they had to stand around and be like, uh-oh. Turns out La La Land didn't win. And they had right. him walk off Savage. in embarrassment because they actually lost. I can't lost. remember who actually won. Uh, um, did Steve Harvey do that one, too? That no, it was not Steve Harvey. That's Steve yeah. Harvey, but good joke. Uh, and then... And then for the last one, obviously, Muppets Christmas Carol. It was so good. I like the story of A Christmas Carol. Uh, I was in the show the, of the play A Christmas Carol as Fred, Fred Scrooge, Scrooge's, uh, Scrooge's nephew. Um, and it was just fun watching the little Muppets do their thing. Uh, Muppet movies are, are great. I, I like the new ones. I like the old ones. I enjoy Muppet movies. And then, of course, uh, Supercon was this weekend. I got to shout that out. Got to spend some time with people that really meant a lot to me, uh, my family. A uh, nerdy, go check him out. We had a great one on one conversation. Uh, and then now the biggest thing was I, I got to debut my Iron Man Mark One armor, and then I actually took home uh, first place in the Masters category of the cosplay competition, and that was really huge because I've been uh, building Mark One since 2016 uh messing around with what i want things to look like and everything and it's still it's still not perfect there's a lot of things i, I want to change especially when this is my first time wearing it at a convention i realize i need to change a lot of stuff but uh getting uh, getting first place after all that um impressive that, i want to see them i want to see the mark one uh photo on the uh discord put it up on the discord sure. i want to see what yeah. it looks like um Trust me, uh, when they when they called me to the stage, I it was it was tough to not uh, like cry in my helmet. I was like, Damn. because I I spent hours and hours. I mean, days really days building this thing. Um, At least no one would be able to tell. It's a pretty. That's pretty true. That is true. I do I do have a helmet. Yeah, no one's gonna no one's gonna see it. But all right, uh, I know that I got a little long winded there, guys. Uh, but Bill, why don't you go ahead? And let us know what made you happy this week, my man. What made me happy this week was I went out uh, on a camping trip with my friends, which was, it was a good time. And I got to teach some people to play hero clicks for the first time. So that was cool. Um, and honestly, they all pretty much liked it. I mean, I, I built the team for them. I brought my own pieces and I tried to keep it simple. Nothing crazy, no equipment, you know, nothing ridiculous, but everybody seemed to like it. And at least one of the guys, shout out to my friend, Josh, is already bought some hero clicks afterwards. So, I mean, seems like he uh, might be getting into it. We might have ourselves a new, Ooh. at least one new hero clicks player. Already got someone addicted to the plastic crack that is hero clicks. The plastic crack is addictive. Yeah. I already you bought something like it's off. about the sculpts, and then you flip it. I bought, I bought something off uh, cool stuff earlier today using code dial5. So, I mean, you know, you can't Ooh. resist. <laughs> Bill, you're getting some bonus points from us right now. Hard to <laughs> bonus points. That's awesome. <laughs> Doing all of the plugs for us. Instead he of, uh, really is. Like, new player episode, Dial 5, Patreon. If you want to be like Bill and be on the podcast, you can go to Patreon, patreon.com. Link in the description below. Uh, you know? Yeah. Okay. Right on. Next up, we're going to go ahead and move into a game. We haven't played a couple months, so you guys might not know what it is. But it is Casual Comparisons. What? 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 Why casual? Mm. From casual comparisons, we are going to read a quick little blurb about the Wikipedia or whatever of this comic book character. The three of us are going to choose a figure in hero clicks that we think best represents uh, this character comic accuracy wise. Uh, Bill being the guest, he chose Dr. Doom. Uh, for those unfamiliar with Victor Von Doom, here is a little blurb. All right. Dr. Victor Van Doom, PhD, aka Dr. Doom, is a Latvian politician who serves as the monarch and supreme leader for the king kingdom of Latveria. He was scarred from an accident and wears an iron mask and armor to hide his true face. He is considered one of the most brilliant minds and scientists on planet Earth. 
is also a sorcerer with skills in magic, matching the most powerful be beings in the universe, making him a potential candidate for Sorcerer Supreme. He hopes to bring order and betterment to humanity through world conquest. Unequaled in ability, ego, and willpower, he has come into conflict with both superhumans and cosmic beings. He is best known as the rival of Reed Richards and arch enemy of the Fantastic Four. Oh, does that sound good to you? Is that, is that a good uh, synopsis that of Doctor Who? You know and love. Yeah. The Doom. Love it. Right. Awesome. So, Bill, since you are a guest, why don't you go ahead and go first uh, with your Doctor Doom? I chose Secret Invasion uh, 40 Doom. Not Doctor Doom. Just Doom plain. Okay. And Doom. he is uh, a rare. He's got Mystics TA. And he's got a great uh, special speed power, Away Nat, which is amazing. When the result of the attack roll in a successful attack by Doom is doubles immediately after attack resolves, you can put the target in any starting area other than the one used by Doom. And also, I really love the special damage power. Doom can use Outwit. When Doom uses Outwit, he can use it normally or choose to counter all powers or abilities of a target character six or fewer squares away. And this is the Doom that is wearing the skin of Valeria. Not to be confused with the Valeria, who is the daughter of Reed Richards and Sue, and Sue yeah, Storm, the, Sue Richards. The quote-unquote love is the, of Doom's life. Yes. yes. Doom, this is the love of Doom's life. They met before he was ever Dr. Doom. Uh, when they were just like gypsies in Latveria, and he murdered her and is wearing her skin as his armor, and it's an amazing doom. And this is six one six Doctor Doom, right? Yeah, correct. Yes, yeah, this yeah. is six one six wow. Doctor Doom. No, that's why, like, when people try and argue, like, well, oh, Doom isn't wow. like always like a bad guy, like you know, he. It's like no, he like kind of. <laughs> 100%. So this is equivalent to Thanos like throwing Gamora off uh the yeah. Vermeer or whatever to get the sword exactly. stone. Doom if you want to know if this, Doom like, is evil, power. the answer is yeah. yes. Okay. I like it. He's got a, uh, you know, he's got his little shooting lasers. He even has the Mystics team ability, which I don't think I don't know if there's many other games with that, but that does sort of go into his whole mystical aspect. So Yeah. All right. Okay. Ruler keyword. All right. All right. I can dig it. I can dig it. Skin thing is is whatever. It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> but but I can dig it. Uh, Simeon, you want to go with your uh, Doctor Doom that you've chosen? Yeah. So I went with the. So this is a fairly classic looking and styled Doom to, in my opinion. Um, so this is from the Fantastic Four set, not the newest, not the Future Foundation, but. Uh, the revamping of Fantastic Four. This is the uncommon zero two one unique Doctor Doom. So at ninety five points, you've got a so top dial ninety five points. You've got seven clicks of life with running shot pulse wave, and then you can have an additional plus five trait, which lets you place uh, two Doom bots in your starting area uh, with that additional trait. Um, Alternatively, for 45 points, you get Running Shot Energy Explosion with only four clicks of life. You get the Minions of Doom Team ability. You've only got six range with two lightning bolts, uh, but you do have, on either point line, you've got Traded, My Robots Often Confuse My Foes, which is a Leadership Mastermind trait. And then when Doom uses Leadership and succeeds, instead of the normal effect, you get to generate the Doom Bots. Um, this is like... To me, this is like kind of like the classic, not necessarily the goofy Doom, but this is like the very like comic-y, uh, not so like story-heavy Doom where, you know, it's all about him and his robots in his castle hiding away. And he does have like stuff like Outwit. I wish he had, you know, Perplex or Prob somewhere on his dial, but uh, he does have the Outwit. He's got toughness for his armor. He's got the Minions of Doom team ability. Um, and then, most importantly, he's got ways to generate Doom bots. Okay. Uh, what I'm gonna, I do like the generating Doom bot thing. So I think not in any movie. If like if that's what you know Doctor Doom from, you're like, what's a Doom bot? What are you talking about? I think in comics and in like animated stuff, like Doctor Doom and his Doom bots are definitely like a big thing. Where it's like, oh, is that Doctor Doom? Like, no, it's just an exact robot copy of him. 
yeah, whatever like reason. life model decoys yeah. and Nick Fury. All right, haven't yeah. seen him in MCU yet, but uh, kind of a big deal in the comics. Tec- technically, we have seen them in Agents of Shield. If we consider that the MCU, oh, if you're one of those sure. people that considers that the MCU, yes. uh, all right. Uh, my Doctor Doom, I'm actually going to go with the Deep Cuts Doctor Doom. So he, uh, a little bit better than Simeon's. Not as good as, uh, not as good as uh, Bill's with the range. He's got eight range, two bolts, though. So, you know, you know give and takes here. Uh, he has Armor, Cabal, Fantastic Four, Latveria, Mystical Ruler, and Scientist keywords. So I do think his keywords are pretty on point, except for having F4 in there. Uh, he's got Outwit, Top Dial. He's got Perplex and some RCE. I think that kind of goes for his whole Brainiac. I think he's better than you type thing. He has Loved Ruler of Latveria, just traded leadership. Of course, means a Doom Team ability. Then his sort of energy thing is his Photon Shot, where he does energy explosion. When he uses it, after resolutions, each hit character is knocked back two squares in a direction of your choosing, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I think this is a solid Doom. And one of the things I really like is that he can be a really big expensive doom with like a four damage, eleven attack, or have him be a bit beefier to start off with, and then he can be an invulnerability perplex uh, doom at seventy five points, or go all the way down to forty points, and then he can be a little sidestep perplex, still you know leadership energy explosion doctor doom. He does get some regen and some pulse wave uh, with force blast RCE down dial, which I also really like. Um, and then of course you can paint him however you want. So if you want to paint him. With the skin of Valeria for whatever reason, you can do that. That's, that's your choice. You can do it. I sure. could do that. Uh, if you I wanna, mean, that's if you probably how to... I would. I'd probably paint him like that. But I mean, well, I know. I know, I know, Bill. I know, Bill. My you dark side do, is coming out. You want to do silver and green, right? Silver, whatever, green cape. If you want to do like the blue, the white, and the silver, uh, whatever, Fantastic Four Doom, you can paint them that way. You can even do um, the twenty ninety nine colors, uh, chrome yeah, and to, right? like, yeah. bluish purple. Yeah. yeah, that's also why I chose this name. I think you know, creativity wise. Obviously, if it's just plain, it's like, well, it's just like a piece of paper, <laughs> Doctor Doom, uh, before unless you do paint him. But yeah, I think the words are cool. I think he's simple, and I uh, I just really dig him for uh, Doctor D here. So I think we do Go should ahead. do uh, before we vote. We should do a quick shout out for the Yu Gi Oh series two four star Ladybug of Doom. Oh, uh, quite See, possibly I... one of the most dangerous versions of Doom. Oh. Right. Uh, really, I mean, so true. It's, I mean, shape change, super senses, charge, flight, speaking, <laughs> wrath of speaking the of, bug. Speaking of deep cuts. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, well, Foresight is a little deep cut for those who that uh, play the old Yu-Gi-Oh! series too. No, I actually do want to shout out one Doom. If it wasn't for him having like the Fantastic Four like look and team ability, um, I was going to pick this Doom, but I really like uh, the Fantastic Four your foundation fast forces doom because he has this trait once again i prove my superiority and i gosh i love that trait anytime a character just moves adjacent to doom on a four through six that character just stops their action or after resolutions you deal him one penetrating damage it's like do not like he could not be bothered to waste his time with you i love the way that that power just plays off him having like fantastic four a team ability yeah. just sort of made me that was like that's what pushed me to be like yeah you know the fun thing I about that Doom, trait... I don't think about him being on the F4. I think about him right. being... Yeah. yeah. The the fun thing about that trade is he's got ESD <laughs> combined with it on either point value. Um, so he's either a 20 wow. for defense or if you're charging him, uh, you have to, like, on a 50-50 roll, you have to either, like, stop your charge, essentially, or take damage. So... Which is probably one of the few other Dooms that does have the Mystics kind of ability. Pseudo, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. not a lot of Mystics on Doom, considering. I mean, no. he is yeah. a very good sorcerer. Yes. Yeah. Th- sadly, that's like one of my big points of contention with almost every Doom we have is the one with Mystics is a very specific version, which it does make sense. That's like a magical armor that he's wearing. Um, but yeah, it's just. It's wild that this character, like those blasts and things like that, he's not Iron Man. His like suit of armor isn't using like repulsor technology or like missiles or anything. It's mostly magic. That's pretty much his whole thing. He's like a brilliant scientist, but it's also mostly magic. Um, and yeah, the fact that we don't get Mystic's team ability, but we get like the keyword a lot is strange. It is. Don't want to. 
Go ahead. I guess, uh, to be fair, the older iterations had the yeah. Minions of Doom, which used to be... Uh, Copyable? Yeah, used to be able to copy Mystics. So now, everything prior to 2017, which would be like Fantastic Four, Cosmic Clash, and uh, further, all of those Dooms... Should have Here's my thing uh, to that, though. Dr. Doom isn't like a wild card team player type person, in my opinion. I think the change to Minions of Doom makes more sense for Victor himself, that when he kills somebody, he heals. You know, oh, I, I, think, I agree, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I I think agree. as a whole, agree, the yeah. team ability is a better change. I'm just saying four past iterations, right? Mystics would have been an option had it been on the team. Um, but yeah. Yeah. No, being a team player is not really Doom's thing, uh, unless he's like leading the team, I guess. True. All right, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to start voting now. So, Bill, you chose first, so we're going to let you vote for which Doom you think made right. the best case for so, being a uh, comic Doctor Doom here. I'm not going to vote for myself, because that seems uh, cheesy. I you will can. vote All for... Uh, I'll vote for Simeon's. Simeon, or no, no, Calder. Who was the one who picked the um, the Doom that can make the Doom bots? That was me. <laughs> All right, so I'll take Simeon then. I'll, I'll go with Simeon because I won't vote for myself. Okay. Well, and Simeon, it is now it is now your turn to vote, which is going to be going to put me in a in a spot potentially or not. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Man. Well, I can't vote for Calder's, and I I, I feel real bad for voting for mine. Um, as niche of like a comic point as that is for Doom, that zero forty secret invasion Doom, it is a very specific and honestly like other than the ultimate Doom with like the goat legs, that's probably the one and only time we'll get like this version of Doom. Just like that other Doom, like it's probably the unless one and only you time. paint. Yeah. They're, <laughs> yes. not, they're not. They're not. They're not making that it. Doom again. Uh, they're not making that too many. But yeah, it is a very so I won't say it's like the quintessential Doom, but it is a very Doom sculpt and base and like dial. Um that storyline, in my opinion, isn't exactly like the most Doom he's ever been, but it is like a huge point of his character. If you're at all interested in Doom and you haven't like read that storyline, it's probably one of like the most defining things of like the the 2000s that doom has done uh when they started actually making his character like a more serious like evil sinister kind of character so yeah i will go with that one that's my long-winded way of saying i will go with uh oh so you're just going for d-o-m doom yeah uh well that actually puts me in an easy spot because i ain't voting for skin doom uh sorry <laughs> sorry bill uh, i will <laughs> i'm gonna vote apparently you're uh, not a serial killer so i mean you're not gonna vote uh, yeah. for it that's fine yeah, uh, I I actually was gonna plan on voting for Simeon's. Anyways, I do like the way why do all your robots look like you again. I I love that whole thing. I like leadership. Um, almost bigger than liking leadership. I like that he has traded mastermind. That I really like that's for Doctor Doom. Yeah. Um, that's really one of the biggest things. And yeah, I think he feels great. Pulse wave feels like mystical stuff, and then you know, energy explosion feels like you know, photon cannons and whatever else he's got. So, yeah, I'm gonna give it to. The uh, uncommon Doctor Doom from Fantastic Four. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks casual comparison. What we chose for most comic accurate Doctor Doom is going to be the Fantastic Four 021 Doctor Doom. So, go ahead, pick one up. If you ever want to play some super fun uh, comic accurate teams. Moving on in the podcast, this is one of, my, one of my favorite games to play, and we haven't played it in a real long time. This is, of course... Add Samaritan. I'm real sorry about what you, uh, you know. Maybe I'll keep my eye out for another one. I don't want no pity. Just treat me equal and know nobody's taking nothing from me ever again. Add Samaritan is a hero clicks guessing game where Simeon and Bill are going to work together. Right, working together, and yet not at all to try to vote or try to guess what figure I have chosen. I've chosen three modern age figures. All right, so that is going to be okay. Ready for this? From Rebirth to X Men: Rise and Fall. These latest con exclusives are not yet modern. I don't think. Anyways, anyways. So yes, uh, Rebirth to Rise and Fall. 
three Modern Age figures. Each round, they will get a clue. It is a 1 through 20 on a random number generator that Simeon has pulled up. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And then we will see if they have a guess. They will then get three rounds of clues, right? So first round, they get a clue, they guess, they don't get it. Second round, they get a clue, they guess, they still don't get it. Third round, if they don't get it after the third round, I will get a point. If either one of them gets a it correctly throughout, it will then get a point, all right? So, uh, Simeon and Bill, they can work together to try to deduce what figures they think it is. However, whoever says it is the person that gets the point. All right, everybody? We uh, we with this? That makes sense? That sound good with everybody? Understood. Understood. All right, fantastic. Simeon, why don't you go ahead and give me the first a clue? All right. First clue for figure number one is going to be clue number 11. Ooh, clue number 11 is a good one. Clue number 11 is going to be name of trait. Uh, this character's trait is... Oh, man, that is... That is tough. That is tough. <laughs> so uh, they have several traits is what called it. This character's that. trait is, are these the new recruits? Question mark. Are these the new recruits? He made it sound like it was going to give it away, but... Uh, I think he was just that's... deciding between multiple traits, and he was trying to go with the one that wasn't going to give it. Are these the new recruits? Man. Um... These are modern figures, right? So yeah. These are all modern. This isn't the Steve Rogers that recruits people to Avengers, is it? That's not... Is that... I don't think that's the name of the No, trait. it's like Welcome to the Avengers or something is, is the trait, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, are these the new recruits? I'll say it's going to be, I'm going to guess somebody that generates, um, like maybe like a leadership that generates like shield agents. So I'm going to say Nick Fury. That was what I was going to guess too. Um, are these the new recruits? Who trains people? I'm going to go with trains people. Who else trains people? Simeon, since we're kind of sort of on the same team. Who else trains people besides Nick Fury? Well, it's not. I can say I don't think this is the trait that Ares has. Uh, I'm still guessing like somebody that generates something. Um, as far as trains people, I mean Cap, kind of, but like again, I don't I don't know what trait this would be in reference to for a Cap. Uh, are these the new recruits? It's got to be like soldier keyword kind of situation. Uh, maybe Peggy. Although I, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna guess. We're gonna guess Cap just because it's Calder. Okay, that's what you're gonna go with, Bill. Simeon, what are you get gonna it, go with? Get it out of the way with. I'm going okay. with Nick okay. Fury. I'm going for Captain America or Nick Fury. It is gonna be <laughs> neither of those. Your number one clue. Number two. Let's have it, Simeon. Clue number two is gonna be number seven. Ooh, number seven. That's a good time. That is going to be a generic keyword that this character has. This character. A soldier. <laughs> this character has the police keyword. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, okay. A that does narrow it down. Um, so now I'm leaning more DC. It feels like DC gets way more PC. Uh, yeah. Uh, a lot more DC, DC police. Uh, police team ability. Love. Um, I'll go with. I want to say like Renee Montoya, but I don't know if that's actually a character or not. Uh, that's just something I'm saying off the top of my head. Um, Maybe it's Sheriff Steve Rogers. I mean, he does love Captain America. Sheriff Steve is no longer modern. That's uh, oh yeah, you're right. You're right. He's not. Yeah, that's Battle World, uh, the Valley. It's along that line though. Yeah, because that would have. We would have had the whole like Thor core. There's a ton of police characters in that. Are these the new recruits? Um, I'll go with, even though it doesn't seem like it would make sense, I'm going to say Amanda Waller. I don't think she has the police keyword. Actually, no. I'm going to go with, uh, I'll go with Barbara Gordon. That seems way more yeah. likely than Amanda. Amanda's probably got like spy. I will go with Diana Prince because I think she has the police keyword. Okay, we have Barbara Gordon. We have Diana Prince. It is going to be 
neither of those oh baby i'm feeling feeling some type of way uh <laughs> we're gonna have to go clue number one uh sorry clue number three your number wow. one pardon wow. me all right and if you're uh, listening at home so far we know that it is a police keyworded character oh. with a trait yeah. that is called are these the new recruits uh last you wanna, clue is your own guesses okay number 10 yeah, if you want to make your own guesses before you see, uh, hear uh, Bill and Simeon uh, absolutely butcher what could this character possibly be, uh, feel free to pause the <laughs> podcast, make your own guesses, and then hit play. Number 10 is going to be a name of a special power. Uh, hey, guess what, Bill? I'm going to say he doesn't have one. This character does not have any special powers. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, making it easy on me. Um... Come on, Bill, you got this. Come on, we're, you have the belt, bro. I do have the belt. Uh, so while they are thinking, I want everybody to know, if you like Bad Samaritan, you want to play it every single week, we do that before we record our episodes on our freaking Patreon Discord server. And Bill, is the, what are you, two, three months in a row now that you have, uh, it's two months in a row that you've kept the Bad Samaritan belt around uh, your waist yeah. by winning the I, months overall? So I think uh, two months... Two months in a row, I think the uh, belt is in the mitten, so should be right. fine. We'll see. I think I'm in from I'm in first place starting uh, to start off this month too, right? You are because you got uh, the theme correct, and I will say everybody I there did is get a the theme. theme. There is a theme. There uh, is a theme. In this, in this, yes, there is. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna guess um, the Flash. Okay. okay, I'm gonna go with so someone that I. I'm sticking with my DC guess. Uh, someone that I know creates somebody with the police keyword. I'm going to go with Nemesis. So he okay. generates the DMA agents. I know that from the video series that I have not yet finished editing. How about those all those unedited videos that we have? <laughs> yeah, Man, we they're, really, they're really ought to edit uh, some gameplay videos. It's almost like we've made a promise to our patrons to upload certain types of videos every month. Yet here we are. Uh, anyways, we got Nemesis. We have the Flash. That is going to be a point for <laughs> me, Calder Ness. I get a point. Aww. You guys are both wrong. Yeah. Uh, and I have to listen to that sound effect too. It's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So this is uh, Simeon. You were close. Uh, this is from the Wonder Woman set. This is uh, zero twelve. <laughs> Sergeant Steel. What does he make? Uh, yeah. He I guess make too. anything. Oh, uh, are you is, kidding me? User from the sidekick. That character has the police team. I ability. never. So yeah. I don't feel too no bad. One, I never once would have guessed Sergeant yeah. Steel. No one plays this character. No one. Yeah. I, I genuinely thought that I was going to give it away. These, I really did. Um, maybe, maybe I, I misunderstood. It just seemed very specific. But, uh, all right. It is a very specific trait, but I mean, no one plays the character, so. All right, so, uh, Simeon, this is figure number two, clue number one. All right. What are we going to have? First clue is going to be number 14. Number 14 is going to be opening attack power. This character has a special attack power, and it reads incapacitate friendly characters that are adjacent or have the planetary union keyword can use incapacitate. So this is, um, what is that? Is that the, um, Orville? The Orville set? Yeah. Good thing I have n- never watched an episode of Orville, so. Uh, so incapacitate. Friendly characters with that keyword can use incapacitate. Um, yeah. Friendly characters that are adjacent or have the planetary union keyword can use incapacitate. So. We've got uh, Lamar something. Uh, Lamar Burton was in. I uh, was definitely in Star Trek. That's, this that's is, the uh, Lamar. Lamar Burton. Oh, Lamar Burton. Burton. Oh, oh, oh well, I ain't never seen Star Trek or reading Rainbow. So don't, I'm trying don't to. Me. Okay, there's there's Alara Katan, but she wouldn't have in cap. There's Kelly Grayson, Commander Kelly Grayson. There's uh, what's Seth MacFarlane's character's name? Um, I am Dewey. They're t- yeah, Peter. 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 Um, man, 
Okay, so I know it's not Bordis. I know it's not Isaac. I know it's not Alara. Those are all like the big heavy hitter people. Um, so it's got to be Gordon something or... <sighs> I can't remember the... Okay, it's also not the doctor lady, probably. She's like all about support. It's either Captain Mercer. I can't remember his first name. Captain Mercer. Um, Gordon, the like the pilot dude or the engineer guy is that helping you at all bill <laughs> is this helping uh, at all? as a person who has never watched a single episode of that show it is not helping me very much it's i'm actually, gonna go ahead and guess i'm gonna it's guess surprisingly that, okay show um I'm, I'm not i'm not knocking the show just haven't watched it um yeah fair. all right so, Simeon, you pick whatever you think it is and then tell me what to guess because I don't know a single character from this show. All right. Um, Calder, will you accept the guess of Gordon? Gordon? Yes, I will I will accept Gordon. Okay. Uh, that is uh, their name. Bill, so. you take Gordon. I'll take Captain Mercer. Alec Mercer, is that his name? No. Oh, um... Do you want to guess Gordon's last name and then Mercer's first name? Uh, that would be great, guys. That would be great. <laughs> and uh, Simeon's a little bit closer. He does. He does know that that this Mercer character is a captain. Um, yeah. You could maybe also guess the title of a uh, of Gordon. That could. That could I would help imagine your... it's like lieutenant or. Uh, I don't know. Oh, no respect oh, for Gordon. I see. Okay. Commander see Kelly Grayson. Uh, is it Alec? Mer- I want to say Alex Mercer. Alec Mercer. Okay. Uh, Aaron Mercer. It's an A, maybe. I don't. Okay. Know. It's been it's been over a year since I've seen the show. Um, and then Gordon is like Gordon Macaroni. Okay. Uh, oh. this is painful. Yes. <laughs> uh, you you were looking for Lieutenant Gordon Malloy. So Macaroni ah, was a little close. So close. Uh, it was it was Captain. Not Alex, uh, Alec or Aaron, but Ed Mercer. Uh, yeah. uh, the other girl, A. Ed. Ed. Yes, Ed. Yeah, the A name. Uh, but yes, it is Captain Ed Mercer that has that. <laughs> that is going to be a point. Simeon, which means Bill is really going to get get this last figure. I need uh, it. To tie us up here. Thankfully, so. the belt is not at stake, so it's okay. It's true. This is not a uh, belt uh, match. This is not. A, this is not. This is not. This is like a pride match, though, Bill. Mm-hmm. It's true. This is yeah. for, I'm, just, I'm not going to go down quietly. Hey, for feel free to not not pick a uh, Orville characters because, like, <laughs> what the hell, man? Uh, there might right. be a theme going on here, though. Uh, let's see. So we've got. <laughs> I'm I'm really impressed with Calder for reaching out of his comfort zone and grabbing not only a Star Trek based character from the Orville set, but also Seth MacFarlane's character out of all the ones that could be chosen. Um, I do not care for, uh, I feel like it has to be some sort of theme because otherwise Calder would never in a million years grab that character. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, (laughs) for figure number three, the first clue is going to be clue number one. Ooh, clue number one. Clue number one is going to be. Oh, this is a significant appearance. Uh, give me a second. Simeon play. Two thousand years later. Why is it so hard? Yeah. Why? Dude, you just sound like Justin Timberlake at this point. Um, <laughs> why? Six and a half hours later. appearance of this character is going to be Captain America 337. That means nothing to me. Wait, 337? That's new. Oh. 
337 would be the first appearance of Zodiac, a character that's... You actually know that by heart? No. What? That's not even a modern character. What? I have zero clue. Um, I will say something that is modern and Cap-related. I'll say Baron Zemo. Okay. Okay. Trying to use the theme to your advantage. I see it a little bit there, Simeon. All right, we got Baron Zemo. Is there a modern U.S. agent? Um, I don't think so. The cap set has a that lot means- of, like, Captain, the Captain, different, like, kind of names like that, but I don't think there was a U.S. agent in there. Oh, man, this is going to be tough on me. I'm not the cap stand that Calder is. It's a shame. I got nothing against Cap. He's good. Okay, like a lot of respect. I don't know. The, the most patriotic character in all of uh, Heroclix, Nuke. <laughs> <laughs> he did paint his face. Hey, so. in a way. Oh, in that's a way. like carved that not, into his face. Is that not like a tattoo yeah. slash carving? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, he's hardcore. He's all about Stars and Stripes forever. I'm, I'm just going to go with U.S. Agent. We'll stick with that. Oh, see what right. happens. Going with the uh, U.S. Agent and Baron Zemo. It is going to be <laughs> neither of those. Uh, uh, figure number three, two. clue number two. Next clue is going to be number five. Uh, number five is rarity and set number. Uh, 018E. 018B. Oh, and they, they are an uncommon. Uncommon. 018B. And this is the prime? <sighs> Yeah, so it's the I've, prime I've version. You the rarity probably the, set number. Probably the uncommon prime. Um, do you remember what the uncommon I prime think I know Captain America was? I think I, I think I know what it is. I think it's the captain. The captain. I believe that's correct. Uh, I think it's the captain. I'll go with. What was the other uncommon? Volt. Jolt. I think it's Jolt from from the one set. I can't remember if that was Captain America and the Avengers or what set that's from. We locked in with uh, the Captain and Jolt. Yeah. I know those are two prime, two uncommon primes. These are I know the cap- characters from the Captain America set. Uh, however, only one of them can be correct. Uh, the reason I did not say that their rarity was prime is because they are not a prime. They are just a B version, and that would be uh, Bill, the captain. So, Bill has tied the game, effectively, ladies and gentlemen, which means Simeon now has to do a 1 through 10, and I'm going to choose a Golden Age figure that still follows the quote-unquote theme of the episode. So, wow. uh, me with a point, Simeon with a point, and Bill with a point, uh, with a clutch coming in there, uh, Simeon, do a little, little one through ten. But yeah, it is it is the captain. We don't always get to the one through tens here on the oh. episodes, uh, but clue number one for the golden age figure is going to be clue number two. Uh, clue number two. Oh wow, I get to read the character's description from the back of their card. So I don't have their card, which makes this. Super, very convenient. Crazy, which means I get <laughs> very I get convenient. Up, I get to look up this character's Wikipedia. I like copy and paste their real name into Google. <laughs> I'm gonna be real with you, listener. This is going to be the second Wikipedia or Marvel fandom thing I'm reading off here. So here, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna pronounce some of these very much real world words wrong. I uh, need y'all to forgive me for that in uh, in advance. Uh, furious at the invasion of Iraq by American super soldiers, scrawny uh, as a Azerbaijani teenager blank. Well, obviously I'm not going to say the real name uh, blank volunteered to undergo medical treatments to gain enhanced abilities that would allow him to strike back at America. The treatments were successful. A blank enjoyed rapidly gained muscle mass and enhanced physique. Uh, I wish that were me. Uh, he was the first person since Steve Rogers, who is responsive to the super soldier serum. As blank joined the Liberators, a multinational group of superpowered villains. During the Liberators' invasion of America, blank engaged Captain America, Steve Rogers, in hand to hand combat, ordering all of their units to not interfere. 
to fought across the National Mall, while Blank criticized his opponent for fighting for an America that believed, that had betrayed its ideals and bullied other nations. Here we are. That, I don't know if that helped you about who this character may or may not be. Golden That's Age. That's this character. Golden Age. Yeah, I've got five. absolutely no idea who this is. Um, the National he, Mall. So, yeah. Apparently they're from Azerbaijan, so that uh, should narrow it down okay. for me, but that it does right not. Away. I mean, yeah. only if yeah, only if you've like read the comic and I guess know that character specifically. I'm just gonna throw a random cap villain guess out there and say Iron Nail because I yeah. have no clue where Iron Nail came from. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm even supposed to go with here. Super Soldier Theorem, Azerbaijan. Um, Part of the Liberators, apparently. Uh, I mean, the I'm not the uh, basically fan that uh, Calder is. This helps you guys out. There are two characters in Hero Clicks that have the Liberators keyword. Uh, this character and the Abomination scary keyword. Are they related? I can't. <laughs> I don't think not. so. Um, yeah. Second clue for free. Wow. I already I got absolutely nothing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and guess uh, Red Skull. I, I know that's not right, but I've, yeah. I've got nothing. Yes. I do uh, not incredibly know. Incredibly German <laughs> Johann Schmidt sure might have been. <laughs> yeah. in an do, not, do not know. Uh, you know, Johann, there might be a Johann Schmidt Jr. that was born in Azerbaijan. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right, right on. So that those are all wrong. Uh, we have to do another one. All right. Number second two. clue We're is going to be four. clue number seven. Clue number seven is opening powers and stats. So this character has eight speed charge and attack with super strength, 16 defense with toughness, three damage with leadership, and zero range. Wow. That literally does not change anything that I already thought about the character. Um, I'll you go... thought my super soldier character might have super strength and charge? Is that what you thought about my super soldier character? Yeah, I, I thought it might, to be honest. And maybe leadership Seriously. because of the description you gave. Oh, uh, sure, sure, I'll go sure. with Baron Strucker, even though I'm pretty Another sure German. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I have no idea at this point. I have no idea. This is, this is Calder... Uh territory right here with apparently odd characters that are Captain America super soldier I'll that I start, don't know about. I'll start naming uh, cap villains that make sense to me. Um, Sin. Uh, Titania. Oh. Yes. Uh, yep. Those are the two. It's locked in with that helps a lot. Uh, um, I'll go with Sin. I don't, I, I, I I don't know. Sin. Yeah, it's it is not it's not those two people, guys. We're gonna have okay. to do one more here, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, last clue is gonna be clue number one. Ooh, this is fun. Clue number one is all the stuff on this character's top dial that you can read. So you guys can tell that this character is from the Avengers set. Uh, their set number is zero fifty three. They are super rare. They're one hundred and eighteen points, and they have the Masters of Evil team ability. You can tell that their combat symbols are just boot, fist, shield, and starburst, all standard. Uh, those are all the things that you can see from the top dial. This character's dial base is also one of those weird ones that has the lines on the bottom that you have to like twist and use like a dial turning ring or yeah, a Lego. It's Avengers, or whatever. Not Avengers assemble. So it's the yes, it's just Avengers. Mm. I've told you the exact set to... set number and rarity of this figure. Yeah, I'm trying to think of superers from Avengers because so this was the set with Sentry, Void, all the chases were like duo fig kind of stuff. Um, a super rare that made sense as a cap villain from that set. Holy cow. Um, Man, it's probably gonna sound obvious to me once, once I hear the name. But like on the surface, I just none of this is like ringing a bell to me at all. 
Uh, Loki. Was Loki born in Azerbaijan? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say he wasn't. Uh, I think he was born in, uh, you know, in his own place, not in uh, Azerbaijan. Frostenheim. Is this? I was thinking Jotunheim. Yeah, this isn't was. the <laughs> character <laughs> from, Ult- this isn't the, the villain from Ultimates, is it? There was an Ultimates villain that was from the Middle East. Um, I will say, I I read you its description. Um, in the Avengers people. set, there were there was a pretty heavy Ultimates sub theme, so it is a maybe. I cannot tell you if it is or not. You have to figure that out, kind of. I just can't think of any names off the top of my head that like would even make sense. I keep wanting to say Iron Sheik, who is a wrestler, and that's. Just oh. incredibly wrong. Uh, and what's our Iron Sheik? I think WWE still has like the rights to like him as a as a character. To, I would like, hope make. so. Uh, or maybe not yeah. hope so. I don't know. Iron Depends. Sheik for for Wave Three. Hey, if we're gonna get a whole yeah, Iron Iron, Iron Sheik Iron might not Sheik. play that well right now. Yeah, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not though, huh? What was the name of that Ultimate villain? I really I I like the Ultimates. I've read a lot of Ultimates. Was it was it the Colonel? What the hell was the name of that character? <sighs> Colonel Stars oh. and Stripes. That's from. It might be Colonel Stars and Stripes. I can't remember. <laughs> that's from a different. That's from a movie uh, that is not Marvel or DC, but it is Golden Age. Um, Avengers villain. Is this Kang? This could be Kang. He's been a lot of Kang. people. I feel like, yeah, Kang has been a lot of people. That's true. I don't feel like he's ever been someone from Azerbaijan, but maybe he has. It's, I mean, yeah. Yeah. who knows? Jeez. Uh, I'm just trying to think of super rares from that set. And I think, so this is like the Morgan Le Fay set, right? She was one of the super uh, rares. At and, and so I will I will say one thing. You are definitely thinking of Chaos War right now. Uh, oh. That- like blatantly apparently like the duos <laughs> and cases you're definitely thinking of chaos war wow okay so i'm even further away than i thought i was yeah um other free i'm just gonna go truly. with generic cap villain that i can think of then um that isn't one of the germany based ones because that's apparently a lot of germany based cap villains though yeah, yeah. offense to our, our german and austrian listener base here it's almost like he uh, fought a war. There, Austria so. represent, yeah, something like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have I don't. With I, shops, so let's I cannot something. remember what the name of the guy from the Ultimates who was that villain, what his name was. I mean, I can't remember. Okay, he was um, from the Middle East, I think. For for sake of time, I will say this: you guys have both said his name already. All right. Well. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Colonel then. Winter Soldier, but that would just be quite yes, wrong. Bucky from Azerbaijan. Uh, yeah. Um, gosh. I don't. Okay. I don't know where Taskmaster's from, and I know there's a Taskmaster's from that set. So I'll go with Taskmaster because that's kind of a cap villain. Gosh. I have, I have even less of a clue of what's in Avengers than I do Chaos War, which is what I originally thought. Uh, at the very least, uh, for a second there, I did Google like Taskmaster because he is in Chaos War, but he is in Avengers. Uh, for a second there, I still thought you were wrong, uh, but no, he is in Avengers. Uh, no, it is actually going to go to someone is getting a point this round, whether it be me, of course, uh, Bill, or Simeon. And guess what, guys? It ain't me. Bill, good job. It is the Colonel. You really pulled that one uh, out of nowhere uh, with the comics knowledge that you had. I mean, good job. Congratulations. Is, is it the actual colonel from Ultimates? Because otherwise, the colonel. I... he is from the Ultimates. Yeah, yeah. That is the Ultimates universe, the Colonel. Oh, but yeah, good job, guys. That was bad, Samaritan. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the dead air that that uh, that, that that there was. Don't worry, it was edited out, so it's fine. Uh, yeah, guys. Now moving on with the rest of the show. But first, I got to say, Bill, good job. You kept your title on the line. You kept it alive. It was looking rough there after those first two figures. Uh, but you kept it alive and took home the W uh, for this bad Samaritan. So congratulations, guys. Was there was there a guess on the theme? Uh, uh, re- repeat the three figures. Yeah, gonna... We have Captain Ed Mercer, Sergeant Steele, the Captain, and the Colonel. Yeah, I was going to go with 
titles, like military titles. Yeah. Or yeah, no, you're ranks, right. It is, it is rank ranks is what they call it. Uh, rank, yeah. That is what it was. Good job. Good job, Simeon. There are no points awarded for that. Not in this version of Bad Samaritan. Oh. But if you join our Patreon and do, for as little as $1 a month, do Bad Samaritan every single month, you, you can uh, actually get points for guessing the theme on that version of Bad Samaritan. Simeon, we got some freaking questions we got to get to, so let's just go ahead and get it started. There are dozens of us. Dozens! First up, from the podcast server, which once again, Patreon server, just saying, throwing that out there. You can go ahead, you can ask us questions every single week for the show. You can also write those into our Facebook or our Twitter pages or send us an email at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com. El Presidente says, if the MCU and DCU, or extended or whatever, the movie stuff, was a dating app like Tinder, which character would you swipe right on and who would swipe left? Right is the good one. He also says, say, ah, dirtbag. Uh, yeah, let's, I, Simeon and I, we went on yeah. quite the rant last time when we, when yeah, we did this. Let's sadly. try to keep it to like, just, let's just use like one or two figures. A figure, we, uh, not a figure, a character we would swipe left on, a character we would swipe, swipe right on, shall we? Yeah. Uh, although I probably would have edited some of that out because I think I went a little too hard on why uh, Tony Stark would be a bad person. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I still, I do not think, I, th I think he's kind of like a toxic personality for relationships, but right. why I felt bad about that is because he's got like a little kid in like the, the finale scene, whatever, um, who seems to think the world of him. So, uh, yeah, I, I felt a little bad about, I'm glad that episode is gone and completely deleted or whatever. Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. Anyhow, back to the question. You brought it up again. Um, someone I would swipe left on. I would swipe left on Carol Danvers because she kind of just, she's like, hey, hi, nice to meet you, bops out for like 20 years and then comes back and expects you to like, I don't know. Although she, she was on call, like Samuel Jackson, Nick Fury just pagered her from space away. I don't think away. she would pay child support. I'm just going to say that right now. I don't think she would. I think she would leave for 20 years and just not I mean, pay you. Yeah. yeah, to go along with that, ego, the living planet, also not a great. Definitely thing. not. <laughs> Definitely uh, not. Very probably, bad on the child sport. Probably all the living planets. I think we could just lump them all in. Uh, so that's a swipe. Mogo left. seems nice. Both of those. Um, I think Star Lord would be a, a pretty easy swipe. Right. He seems like a fun guy. He's not like crazy. It's not like the Hulk. You don't have to worry about him like ripping your limbs off or whatever. Uh, he does get like weird glowy eyes and build a giant Pac-Man out of rock, but... Really? Well, well not anymore. Star-Lord Star Lord's a swipe left for me. I mean, he can't be trusted. He's just going to disappear in what? a spaceship. I mean, you don't know. I mean, you think he's, like, at... going to be supporting you? I don't think so. You look well, at I actual don't, I don't relationships I'm looking like that a, Star Lord I'm looking for, like, a good night out kind of situation. Oh, oh that's, that's, a, that's yeah, what we're talking about. That's yeah, way right. different. Star-Lord's yeah. got, like, the dance moves and everything. Plus... Uh, or Jackson yeah, Pollock type guy, huh, Simeon? <laughs> we could do like the disco, the disco ship thing. Um, I guess Simeon that's wants Thor to get Jackson Pollock with the disco ship. That uh, is down to. Uh, so I'm gonna do mine real quick. Uh, my swipe left is got to go to Black Widow. Uh, trust me, she's got it there in the almost everything department. But I think when it comes to being a long term. I don't I don't think Natasha's I don't think she's about that life. I don't think she is. Uh swipe right, you know, it's gotta go to Peggy. Is there is there a better girl in the MCU uh, who's got it all like Peggy Carter does? I don't think so. And just to mm. clarify here, I'm gonna say nineteen forty one uh forty five, oh. whatever. <laughs> uh Peggy Carter. Uh so there's no confusion I about which Peggy Carter about swiping right on here. Uh, yes. Uh yeah. You know what? I swipe right on both, to be honest. Dementia, uh, Peggy, I don't know about Peggy. dementia. Either, Peggy either one is fine. Uh, no offense to anyone uh, with dementia. Uh, no, yeah. uh, hard swipe right on Darcy, uh, except she's a little really? too smart for me. So I'm like, really? I feel I feel dumb the whole time, which is fine. Right? It's just you know. Uh, and I then, feel like she could. Darcy's the kind of person who's she's like smart, but she could also probably talk about like the Bachelorette, right? At the same time, you know. So that's why I swipe left on uh, Jane Foster. Because I feel like Jane Foster is like way too. No, she's stuck up. I I I'd pass. Which one? Jane Foster. Oh yeah, that's why I'm I'm swiping left on Jane. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. 
because I think she, I think she, uh, it's like, she doesn't seem like she deals with like this dude that she does not even know. Um, whereas Darcy's like more of her own person. So I don't think Jane is a chill hang. Like she seems like she'd be a little rough to like spend too much time with too much self-involved. Hmm. I feel like she would give me anxiety. Like she would stress me out <laughs> if we were hanging out with each other. Uh, Bill, what, what do you got for uh, swipes, smashing and passing, whatever you want to call it? I'm going to go ahead and swipe right on Sharon Carter. Let's do this. Really? Okay. I don't All even right. care if I don't care if she's the insert spoiler here. If you haven't watched it yet, um, okay, Power Broker. Power um, Broker. Yes. Uh, insert. You know, spoiler. Let me have some. I like it. I mean, I'm willing to try. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. You're just trying to get that and, super uh, soldier and a left. serum hookup. I wouldn't ma- wouldn't mind getting the super soldier serum. It'd be pretty fun. And, uh, and a left bill. Oh, a left. Um, Wonder Woman. I mean, Ooh, hot, oh, yeah, hot. But okay. like, I don't think I can handle her. I mean, so yeah, she's uh, pretty fierce and crazy. Universe. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna also, pass Wonder Woman to the left. Swipe left on Aqua Woman because she'd probably beat me up. There is no, there is no Aqua Woman. So, um, Mer- you mean Mira? Yeah, Mira. There it is. <laughs> what would have Aqua Woman? I'm, uh, I'm gonna swipe. Okay, the, as far as it goes for like the DC EU, that's tough. That's actually that's a really that's a toughie. Um, gosh, it's gonna be a swipe left on Harley Quinn for sure. That chick's crazy. Um, can't yeah, got too not much in like crazy. a funny way, like a. No, not like a quirky, crazy way. That girl think they are when they like cosplay Harley Quinn. Like, oh, I'm quirky. I'm crazy. Uh, She is like absolutely bonkers. Um, Dang, do I like? Do I do the ultimate swipe right to uh, to humiliate Superman and choose Martha Kent? (laughs) 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 Gotta do like. the alpha move and take uh, Lois Lane, right? Yeah. Oh, there. Um, oh, duh. Yeah, Lois Lane. Yeah. I'll, no. You know. Any, any I mean, Adam... if you want to take Superman's no, I don't know if I didn't for a nice Lois Lane first. In most iterations, That's his dad bad. has <laughs> tied from in, like a. Heart that... of... I don't. I actually. I'm not really attracted to Amy Adams. Uh, but I will. T- at this she's fine. Point, I mean, there's nothing wrong with her. She's not great looking, but I mean, it's fine. I mean, yeah. You know, if, if you like your like your cake plain, you know, vanilla, I'm fine. Yeah. At least, at least there's cake. Um, yeah. All right, Bill. I guess you did. You already did the DC. All right, yeah. So I think we're solid. I think we're solid. We did a. We did get. We we blew this question to the ground. Hey, Mark on the Dial Age Discord says, in the intro, where'd you get the Anakin soundbite? Hero clicks is like that. This one's for Simeon. I'm gonna make Hero clicks like that forever. Yeah. Uh. So, it's not an Anakin soundbite, although the person saying it is a master on the council. Uh, granted a seat by the Jedi's. Oh. Um, no, it's just me. Uh, during Heroclix Extreme Rules, one of our promos, I say, I'm going to make Heroclix like that for everyone. Uh, so that's where that comes from. It's the billion clicks Bruce mean, persona. Sound like Anakin Skywalker. I'm going to make Heroclix like yeah. that yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Interesting. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. Cool. We got you and Ewan McGregor. We got Obi Wan here, too. Watch out. Watch out, Simeon. Uh, and then we have James saying, Dick Dastardly, Robbie Rotten, Waluigi, and Dr. Robotnik are on a theme team. What is their keyword? I'm going to say, I think, I think in one way or another, they are all kind of like smart inventory guys, or at least cunning. So I, I could see them having the scientist keyword, or definitely the bad guys keyword, for sure. They could have the man keyword. Uh, they could from from the Lord of the Rings set. Uh, what a great keyword that was! Um, the man keyword. That's a keyword. Oh yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. indeed. Wow. <laughs> you had wow. to specify. So it's not man like. It's not man like the gender. It's man like the race in Lord of the Mankind. Rings. Mankind. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, there are characters. There's ki- characters with the kids keyword or teen keyword, and also with the man keyword. So why not? Um, yeah, let's see. Doctor Robotnik definitely scientist. Uh, Waluigi, like the sidekick 
to one of the terrible. <laughs> yeah, Waluigi is the problem. Robbie Rotten, like main villain. Yeah, I think just generic bad guy trait or keyword, just generic bad guy. Um, Imposters? I don't know what what would be like. What would the keyword be? Is imposters a keyword? I'm assuming it's not. Sus. <laughs> that word keyword. Martial artist? No. Brute warrior. Warrior brute, would make brute sense. Brute work. I would see. I don't, Luigi's definitely I don't a warrior. See... Waluigi and Robbie Rotten as brutes. You know? Yeah, brute, like, kind of brute for Waluigi makes more sense. I don't, I don't know if I see these guys really brute, brutish people. They're they're kind of like that skinny, clevery, cunning villain type guy. Dick Dastardly, Robbie Rotten, Waluigi. You know, because uh, it's Wario. Wario would definitely get the brute oh, yeah. keyword. He's brute. But He's super Waluigi is kind of gangly. You know. Let's see. Uh, but yeah, yeah, all right. I think, I think we're good. I think we're good on this question. Yeah, There's, yeah several uh, good, good questions. That was a tough question. Got, a tough question. A, yeah, it is a tough question. Uh, hey, Bill. Bill also asked the question, how did Chance not show up for Bad Sam when the theme was literally Donnie Pepper Cricket? And the answer is probably no. because we're mm-hmm. football. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Chance. You have... Sorry. Had a shot. It was Donnie Pepper Cricket. You missed it. It was pretty good, too. It was hard to come up with that theme, but it, it was pretty fun. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a Malcolm Rush question block here. So Malcolm says uh, his last set of questions were about main themes. These are now about sub themes. Bill, this is kind of a lot. We're just going to we haven't wrote out answers. We're just going to go with whatever. We're going to go with favorite. He asked best versus favorite for each of these. We're just going to go favorite. So favorite sub theme in a DC set. And these are non chase sub themes because that would be the second part. All right. of the question. Uh, so, Justice Lords. Justice Lords. Justice Lords is a good one, yeah. We actually did record answers to this two weeks ago, but then uh, lost them and then didn't do it for our recovery episode. So I'm going to go with DC sub-theme. I think I'll go with the Seven Soldiers. I like that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did Outsiders from Rebirth. Yeah, no, I actually really did like that sub-theme because it was was really small, but gave us some dope modern-age Outsiders. Really like that Bizarro. Yeah, you're right. Dang, simi has got better memory than I do. All right, right on. I was like, uh, yeah, no, right on. Uh, next is now going to be favorite sub theme uh, for Chase in a DC set. DC set, oof. Yeah, so, um, not a lot of modern, great you golden. Right. So this is like throughout all time, um, which is good because DC <laughs> does not get nearly as many sets, and they've got like the same hit or miss ratio that Marvel does with a quarter of the sets that come out. So there's a lot of eh, kind of like DC uh, chase themes. I'm going to go with, uh, uh, what was it from JLU? Um, Super friends because troublers and troublemakers. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're super meta. So it's good. It was a fun theme. It's like a nice, like fun callback kind of theme. I think, I think I'm going to go with the world's finest chases, the KC. Uh, so they were not only like an update to the old KC figures where they were like really decent point values and they had traits that made them even better, but then they also gave them these real playable bottom dials or like single clicks, not really bottom dials, but single clicks. So you could have like your green lantern on it a 30 point line so you could play like the full kc team without necessarily having them all at full power and that was pretty fun right on and then for the chase set, i've got to go with lantern chases from wonder woman uh love they brought it back really liked the uh freaking constructs really loved how that was done so yeah next up is favorite sub theme in a marvel set on chase non chase marvel I went with Alpha Flight for mine. That's um, right. It does not get a ton of love. It got the most love it's ever gotten in both Armor Wars and Invincible Iron Man, which is weird that like those are the two sets where they really hammered in Alpha Flight. Thought not... they had more interaction with like X Men. Sorry. Yeah, you would think it would be more of an X Men kind of set. Um, I guess Mutant Mayhem they had quite a bit too. But as far as modern goes, um, yeah, it's not a whole lot. Like, probably 
the I only guess. way you'd be able to make a modern team is using Captain Marvel, the super rare Captain Marvel from Captain America and the Avengers, sure. and some other filler stuff. I guess I will go with um, Future Foundation, which is kind of cheating considering it's the name of the set, but it is a like theme of the set, right? The characters it's a that are theme, not so much a sub theme, but we'll we'll allow it. Allow it. I I have to go with. I think I said this last time, but I think I said the Wrecking Crew. Lo- I love it when we get the Wrecking Crew. I, I really like the Wrecking Crew, and actually this past week we did 400 points Silver Age, and I was able to, uh, this is my the only game I played this week, and I was able to beat a Dark Knights team team with the Wrecking I'll, Crew, and I was happy. I'll change, I'll change my answer so as to not be cheating. Uh, Frightful 4 from the original, the, the Fantastic Four set, so okay, it's nice. not be two weeks. Uh, and then, obviously, same thing, but on the Marvel side of things, favorite chase sub theme, Marvel set. This one's an easy for easy one for me. It's it's the Doom chases, the new from ones, Future yeah. Foundation. Yeah, from Future Foundation. Doom being my favorite character, so easy so one. I, yeah, I like those Dooms for multiple reasons. Um, number one being that they brought back the colored base, and then it's like. This so the Doom chases are very reminiscent of the Batman chases from the Batman set, where they they were all variations on the same character, uh, slightly different but like more interesting kind of stuff. Um, and I really like the Invincible Iron Man chases, but I have to go with the Phoenix Five because I think the Phoenix Five is one of like the coolest chase themes that's ever been done. I just think that it's. At least, like, style-wise, like, sculpt-wise, it's really cool. Uh, the power interaction is really cool. It does not work as well as it could in, like, modern settings because the point values are just way, way too high. But uh, they still are, like, one of the best chase themes to, like, display. Were those the ones that came with the gems? No, oh. the they are just, like, the glowy... The glowy goldish, like colored phoenix ones. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Wolverine in the X Men. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I assume this is what I said last time, but I'm gonna have to go zombies. Marvel zombies, of course. So either the original four, Colonel America, Hulk, Wolverine, and Spidey, or the eight and eight that we got for the Deadpool set and the Guardians of the Galaxy set. I mean. Uh, f- first of all, learning how hard the old ones were to pull blew my mind when I was a player. And as anyone who's watched any of our unboxing YouTube videos knows, I've been trying for a long time to get them, and I have finally acquired them all, which is so awesome. Then the Marvel Zombies, when they first came out, not just because they're cool and I like Marvel Zombies, but we didn't know what the chases were yet when Scott Porter did his very first ever unboxing in 2014 for the Deadpool set, right? When he did his first ever unboxing, he pulled zombie chase venom and we were like oh my gosh the chases are zombies and it was like the comments being half upset that like whatever they weren't like panda pool and something else like losers that they were incels really <laughs> um uh because zombies are way cooler and and then other half of comments being like yeah. oh no it's zombie team base this is the end of the world which it kind of was you know, you know um, how much more i would prefer zombies to venoms though like even if oh, pe- sure. like, even if they started going with non comic accurate things and just started doing like vampire versions of characters, or you know like werewolf version of a character, I don't, like whatever. If they just started going like classic monster versions of characters rather than Venom, I'm so sick of like the venomization of characters. It's the venomization is is abhorrent and honestly a spit in the face to all of them. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. and then seeing the uh, zombie Red Skull. Like at a time in my life where I was pretty down, I was like, "Wow, Captain America, zombie villain, that's awesome!" To go against my Colonel America, I was like, "That's dope," uh, and I played the heck out of that Red Skull. So yeah, I, I love the zombie chases for a lot of different reasons. Next up, got which sub theme in a main set or chase that you feel is in the wrong set, and which set would you put it in? So I'm pretty sure I can... the easiest sub theme for me to say is in the wrong set. Uh, I'm gonna make this joke once again. Is the Earth X sub theme in the Earth X set? You. Because uh what a great Spider Man set, and it was just completely ruined by this like half on fire Namor and this weird uh 
I don't know the rose. What what is even that? I don't I don't know all this terrible it's a spy, that's a Spider-Man X character idiot stuff. Oh, was that Spider-Man <laughs> character, not Earth X character? Well, you know what? <laughs> Below the sky. All these all these non-Spider-Man villains in this Spider-Man set made Earth X real hard to deal with. I will say very similar. The hey. Fantastic Four set also had the most recent one. Also had a Spider-Man sub theme and it's like why like what what is the purpose of this half the set with Spider-Man we had not seen Spider or Fantastic 4 in Hero Clicks for I I was just new to it but it was what like 10 years or something before yeah quite a while we had been in and they were like oh we're going to make half the set Spider-Man anyway just go ahead we're going to do it uh I'm going to say that yeah. uh I'm going to say the, this is the worst chase sub theme ever made. Chase theme ever made. And that is the Captain America and the Avengers chase theme. A slap in the face to me, somebody who felt contractually obligated by my uh, love of Captain America to get every figure in the set. Um, having to waste time and money on getting those chases really hurt me. Because they, they phoned it in. They were like, whatever, clicks effects are back. They didn't do them in a yeah. cool way. Half the clicks effects, not maybe, maybe not half, but two of them were basically useless. One was to remember what piece of terrain you chose with Absorbing Man, which sucked. Then one was just another piece of water, even though Namor already made water <laughs> right. for free. No, like, it's they literally, so Namor's dumb. is literally just a water terrain marker, which they already include in their little token sets. Right. It's, it's yeah, it it killed me. I was like, wow, we could have done alternate characters yeah. that were Captain America. We could have done. I really wanted the Captain America core. I would have killed somebody if we would have gotten the Captain America core as a chase set. That'd have been awesome, like of joy. Uh, and yeah, no, that that was by far the worst time ever that they've done a chase set. They just did me dirty. Um, it just didn't fit the set at all. Made no sense. Anyways, uh, number six. What sub theme do you want in an upcoming set? So because we know the upcoming sets ish. Uh, we know that they're going to be War of the Realms, which will be an Asgard kind of based theme. We've got uh, Empire, which is going to be like Fantastic Four, Avengers, X-Men, Combobulation kind of thing. And then we've got Set 47, which by all accounts is going to be at the very least What If. if it's uh, definitely uh, What Kids If for sure. Gonna, if the Wiz Kids is to be believed on Twitter, it'll at least be What If. Uh, but most likely Disney Plus and What If kind of stuff. Um, All right. Sub I'll themes. Go first. Okay, yeah. I, I was just going to say uh, shout out like a sub theme for each one of those if you can think of them. Well, all right. So for each one, I can't. The, the first sub, sub theme that came to mind for me because it has not been in Clicks for a while was Age of Apocalypse. I want to see Age of Apocalypse in Clicks again. Yeah. And preferably not as like a chase theme. It'd be. Really yeah. cool if I could finish out a Age of Apocalypse set without needing all chases. Although maybe I don't know, it'd be all right if they did it okay. But I don't think any of the upcoming sets really make sense. But yeah, if like just in general, the next time they revisit X Men for like the twelfth time in the year, right. Age of Apocalypse would be a cool way to do it. Uh, I if we could get no more X Men ever for a year or two, I would be okay with that. Um, sub theme I would obviously want is like Great Lakes Avengers or like Serpent Society, but like all put into one set. We've gotten those themes dribbled throughout the years. Uh, it's been a hot minute, so we have a Great Lakes Avengers anything. I think since 2015 with Squirrel Girl was probably our last Great Lakes Avengers. But I would yeah, I really want more Great Lakes Avengers for sure. Yeah, man, I just want more like cosmic villains and just like villains in general i always feel like we get like shorted on villain potential so with empire uh we're able to pull from x-men villains something that would be great would be like hey not another saber tooth villain because we've got plenty of those um it looks like they're grabbing like plenty of like scrolls and kree and stuff like that to like do stuff with which is great I'd really like to get like three generics like we did with the uh, scrolls in the Captain Marvel movie, get three generics for like every alien race that appears in that storyline. And then um, I think in war of the realms, if we just get like some like dark elves and like some, 
some whatever kind of like stuff that actually like makes sense. It'd be nice to get some cool sure. generics that actually can fill out a fill out a sub theme without having to like wait for another set to do it. And right on. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be all of our freaking questions for the show. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to a Jedi Legend Hero Click Tip of the Week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Jedi Legend says, picking up and putting down objects requires movement to perform. So if that man is, you know, in stealth, hiding in a heavy object, Hulk can charge up because it's movement and grab the object and smash him with it all in one fell swoop. Not only does that remove Batman's cover, <clears throat> but then, you know, it's going to hopefully murder Batman with a large object. And yeah, that was a tip. So yeah, you can take the object away, <laughs> free the cover. Also, if you ever, if someone is using an object as stealth and you don't have like a charge super strength piece, you can just like shoot it. If you have three damage, you, just, you can shoot the object and bada bing, bada boom, no more yeah. stealth. You should have chose some printed terrain, you fool. As long you as were, it... you think you were smart putting your heavy object out somewhere right. where you could use it, no, I'm gonna destroy it. Or the amount of times it. where I've done that, where like my whole plan has been built around, like, ah, I will use these heavy objects as stealth, and then my opponent's like, I'm gonna TK that out from under you, and I'm like, ah, oh, TK as well, yeah, <laughs> dang. Uh, there was like Batman animated series sealed. For one, my opponent like blasted some blocking and turned it into hindering, and I was like, oh, yep, forgot that was a thing, and then uh, instantly destroyed my hindering by destroying my objects, and I was like, ah, also forgot that was a thing, and it was just a bad experience all around. But uh, so sad. Yes. And if you want a bad experience all around, uh, go to some other website <laughs> other than CoolStuffInc.com because they only give good experiences all around, if you know what I mean. Uh, and I mean Heroclix, which they have all the newest and coolest Heroclix in stock every day from the latest singles to the sealed products. So you should check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they, six uh, people humor. think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let the cat in here because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Hello, caller. I just got one last thing I want to say. Yeah. The last thing I want to say is Dakin. Mm, okay, Bill. Apparently. 